Victoria Cross, what Victoria Cross? Distinguished service in the Crimea. Well, distinguished service telling tall tales. I'll have you know I charged with the light brigade. You couldn't charge a battery. You haven't been out of this bed in 40 years. Well, neither of you. Charlie oh, believes me, don't you, Charlie? Of course I do, Grandpa Joe. How many rappers did you get today, Charlie? Four or one cup. Only one's worth collecting. Oh, don't forget to put out Mrs. Troutbeck's washing for your mum, Charlie. She's on nights all this week. I won't. It's for dinner. I'm starving. Cabbage again, Charlie. Ten more minutes. It takes a bit of boiling when it's old. I know the feeling. <laughs> Ten minutes. Perfect. Just time for a story. A story? Any particular story? The story of Willy Wonka. Didn't we tell you the story of Willy Wonka last night? No. I have a distinct recollection of telling you the story of Willy Wonka just last night. And the night before that. I don't mean to be rude, Grandpa Joe, but you are getting a bit old. And maybe a bit, well, forgetful. Have we really never, ever told the boy about him? No! Well, for his entire life, the tot has not once told a lie. I told you so. But can we answer all his queries? Can we cover all the theories? All the beds are staying so dearies. Let's just try. Switch on the mechanical illustrator, Charlie. We need pictures. Mr. Wonka, there's so many tales to tell All about the tasty sweets That made the people gather around for just one smell Children know While in their rumpers Took an eggs between their chompers Till a tiny bird was perched upon their top Yes, Mr. Willy Wonka has a sex appeal What makes me feel Okay. 
slip the disc. I think I need a pee. I think I just had one. <laughs> They've been telling you stories again. They've been telling me about Willy Wonka. <laughs> they do talk nonsense, your grandparents. I wouldn't believe a word they say. That's libel. Every one of my stories would stand up in court. Oh, you couldn't stand up anywhere. Not with those legs. My legs are like tree trunks. I stood guard three whole nights during the Battle of Calamari. There were spears coming at me and arrows. And lions. And lions. And, and dinner's ready. Tonight's special? Cabbage soup. Everybody's favourite. Who's having? Uh, too rich for us, love. Uh, let Charlie have it. Yes! yes. Let, let Charlie have it. Lucky thing. Double rations again, Charlie. Fifth time this week. Evening, love. Evening, love. Any luck? Not today. Never mind. There's always tomorrow. Evening, Charlie! Dad! <laughs> Look what I've found today! An old cherry. It's uh, mahogany. Burnt for ages. That'll keep us warm tonight, at least. And this? We should fix one of the holes in the roof. And Charlie, look what else I found. And look! The... A bit of water damage, but it's hardly touched. And look! Blank pages. Perfect for inventions. <laughs> Perfect for homework. Oh. Ah, your mum's right, Charlie. School work first. All right. Mum will check your answers when you're done. And no daydreaming, hmm? If five points of X bars of chocolate, and each bar has Y squares, and X is two times Y, then how many squares of chocolate does each boy have? Hmm. If five... How many squares chocolate? Dear Mr. Wonka, I know that you're a busy girl. You must have lots of mail to read. I'm writing for my family, cause there's nothing special that I need. The time you take to read this letter will be time well spent. Because I've made a list of things you might want to invent. How's your homework? Almost done. That's my Charlie, that's my son. For Dad, who's always on his feet, you might please grant me this one wish. To keep his shoes attached to him, some bootstraps made of licorice. For Josephina, I have drawn a recipe beneath. For Mo is made of marzipan when she can't find her teeth. Have you scrubbed up? Yes, I did. That's my Charlie. That's my kid. When I was smaller than I am, I think one day we saw the sea. My mum, she had an ice cream and was happy as a mum can be. For her, I would invent an ice cream that would never melt. So she could think all day the way I wish she always felt. For Grandpa George and his Georgina, something not in any store. Some pillows made from marshmallows to keep the noise down when they sleep. Grandpa Joe, who soon is turning 90 and one half. A joke that he made from jelly beans, cause he just loves to laugh. Off to bed now, counting sheep. Hope we don't die in our sleep. <laughs> I think I thought of everything for you to ask your special touch and when these things are all complete it means not asking far too much please to rub them off yourself so big can ask you how'd you do am 
find out more, let's go straight over to our chief confectionery correspondent, Cherry Sunday. Well, there's no time to give 
it. And when Baruch is here, you'd better find a way to make the dollar straight for Don't mention me! Now, when she heard of Wonka's price, she started to attack. So I told my peanut shellers, the other tougher not to crack. You each a thousand Wonka bars, start shelling them at once. For when Baruch is happy, it's much better for her pappy. For 40 days and 40 nights, the ladies tried to pick it, and always to the music of... And when she goes and tickets, I want a golden ticket! And then a girl cried out, and in her hand, the panacea, a golden ticket on display of what it's sweet Baruchas say. Daddy! Buy me North Korea. When Baruchas says...
two tickets left. It doesn't seem fair. Some kids have all the luck. I didn't want to win a golden ticket anyway. It's only a factory. It's a stupid factory full of machines. <coughs> to see that. Now look here. That's quite enough of that kind of talk. I remember what Lord Nelson told me at the Battle of Trafalgar. <laughs> he said, Joe, remember, no matter how bad things seem, there's always a char. A char? He meant chance, but he got shot before he could finish his hand. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is... The point is, Charlie's got no chance. George! I'm sorry, Josephine, but it's true. If Charlie can't buy chocolate, he can't win a ticket. It's just plain fact. No use getting his hopes up. You see, I told you so. Oh, Wonka, what chocolate whirlwinds have you unleashed upon the world? Crazed children lust for sweets. Greedy adults beguiled by gold. The whole world gripped in a desperate hunt for the last golden tickets. It's not so much the apocalypse as the chocolates. Not so much Armageddon as... Breaking news, Jerry. You're breaking my news, Jerry. We have another golden ticket winner. Chuck Mageddon! Jerry, where are you? Jerry, I'm in suburbia. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. My name is Doris TV. Cops, on Dory Leaves, please. And this is my husband. Carmen. What? Make a lotus crop. Now make me jump. Let's get away. I'm loving with my 
out there for me. You'll find something, I'm sure of it. I hope so. How is he? Not good. He hasn't asked for a story for a whole week. He just sat in his chair. He won't even speak. Right. I don't think we'll be needing this anymore, will we, Charlie? Stupid thing. There was never anything good on anyway. I have got a better idea. Who needs a telly when you can have a telescope? Look what I found down the dump. All it needs is some glass. <laughs> It'd be almost nearly perfect. <laughs> oh, hi there, Captain Bucket! Pirates on the starboard bow! <laughs> oh, maybe with that hog in the roof. Maybe we'll see a shooting star. You can make a wish on it. Don't waste a wish on me. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> if your mother were here, she would say. That one's Mars, she would hang you the moon, and then she'd bottle the stars. She would say, brush your teeth, is that dirt behind your ear? You'd be dreaming if your mother were here. Leave me love. Leave me love. <coughs> How is he? Not good. Maybe you can cheer him up. See what I can do. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Come on, Charlie. Let's take a look at your notebook again. I want to see all your new inventions. Please. That'll be nine pounds, please. 
I do love chocolate on a cold day, don't you? The fudge gets so thick and creamy, I know it's wicked, but I just can't resist. We'll be left to dinner, darling. Oh, heavens. Taxi! Taxi! Oh, darling, wait for me! Excuse me, sir! 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 What's the matter? He dropped his money. Pound note? I should give it back. Chocolate! Only a pound! <laughs> You could, <laughs> couldn't you? One card, chocolate. Wait! <laughs> Scrumptious fudge mellow delight, please. You finally come into your inheritance. <coughs> there you go. Chocolate! I'm not going to eat it now. I'm going to take it home and share it. Good idea. Maybe I should have one tiny nibble, just to check it's okay. <laughs> Maybe you should. Oh. <coughs> what is it, Charlie? I... Oh, my, I... Found something. Oh, some people have all the luck. <laughs> Grandpa Joe, how'd you know that I'd be coming home today with something good, something gold, something special that I could hold? Mr. Wonka, how'd you do? Tomorrow morning, I'll be seeing you. Charlie, you're home early. What's the matter? He's white as a sheep. He can't speak. What is it? Charlie? Grandpa Joe. We won. <laughs> Charlie, get my uniform from high upon the shelf. Dust off all the years since it's been worn. I admit, for quite a while, I haven't been myself. But spread the news, a new Joe has been born. <laughs> Though I haven't walked in years, Change my oil and check my gears. Give my hair a clip and whip my shaving cream. But don't, don't, don't you pinch me, Charlie. I don't want to wake up from this golden dream. Joe, what are you doing? We are going to visit a chocolate factory. But Joe, you can't walk. Walk? I could run a four-minute mile, just like I did in the 48 Olympics. <laughs> Josephine, I get the thread that needle from the kit. I'm sure the moths have had a woolly chew. And you won't have to alterate the trousers still will fit. Cause I haven't had since I was 22. While your mother starts to dress me, and your dad can iron and press me, press the pedal to the kettle for the steam. Don't, don't, don't you pinch me, child.
Charlie Bucket is bucked to losing trend. I'm on the very last of one. Let's go for tickets. Charlie, how do you feel? Something out to date, but life is still the same. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The clock strikes. The hour has come. In the shadow of Wonka's factory we stand. But where is the man who built it? Whither the shadowy confectioner, who has hidden in his sugary Shangri-La for over 40 years? Where is he? The man they call...
Our schedule has no room for intros of languid and rubato. Accelerate right to the bus. Time. 
And you must be his grandpa, Jeff. At your service, sir. Oh, very nice. Delighted and we're to the joy. <laughs> something wrong? It's nothing, sir. Nothing's always something, Charlie, except if you're a person who makes something out of nothing. Now, which is it with you? I don't know. Are you the sort of boy who makes something out of nothing? No, sir. It's just you're not what I expected. That is a coincidence. I'm not what I expected either. <laughs> now, this is Bucket, Salt and Beauregard, Madame TV and Chancy Club. Your visitors in my backyard are shepherding this tiny group. And so I look to you to be in your future generation. And negotiate her pay. So how does this contract pay? What does this contract pay? Yeah. Oh, it sits for hours 
with words upon his tongue, he cannot help but rhyme his doom and gloom. So if you taste my flowers, you'll see that I'm a mom. That certain root, that lucky truth. Simply second nature to wish away the gray, to take the Christie and make a tree. Yes, there's no rhyme or reason. I was simply made this way. What's strange to you is natural to me. It's simply second nature to paint outside the lines. It merely is the way that I was born. You see, I've been selected to create the unexpected and make each day feel just like Christmas morn. Picasso took a torso and turned it on its head. It isn't right or wrong, it's what he felt. and make a tasteful rose. What can I say? It's simply what I do. Some men make pots of money. They're happy, I suppose. But be grateful that for just a lucky few. It's simply second what isn't there, the mind is such a wonder to explore, and though some nights I dread all the voices in my head, I'd rather be this way than be a boy. It's simply second nature to dream of something new, to wait on fire and try to stop each day. Strike that and reverse. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. <laughs>
masters, what about my machinery? It's all going to need to be cleaned. Meanwhile, production stops. But is anybody thinking about that? No, it's all Augustus, Augustus, Augustus. <laughs> oh, Grandpa Joe, is Mr. Wonka joking or is he serious? I'm not sure, Charlie. I think he might be both. Oh, Jeremy, run down to the fudging tub. Would you expect to be in about 13? <laughs> we'll, fit. we'll fetch him out of the stick. Be quick, if you miss him, he'll end up caramelised, and that would be terrible. <laughs> Just think, bones in the toffee. Disgusting. <laughs> what? <clears throat> ah, he'll be fine. At least he died doing what he loved best. <laughs> <laughs> Why the long faces? Does anyone want to go home? No! That's the spirit. Come on, then. Go. No wiki for the rest. Into the goods, lips. <laughs> Now we must get on with the tour. This lift is operated by counterweights. They're loading Oompa Loompas into the ballast basket right now. You get just the right number of Oompas in the basket and the lift goes up. But first, we have to be brushed and dusted, scrubbed, body sprayed, and then covered in a layer of protective plastic. Hey, <laughs> Wonka, is this really necessary? Necessary? Of course it's necessary, Mr. Salter. <laughs> You don't think I'd ask you to do anything if it wasn't absolutely necessary, do you? That would be ridiculous. Oh, oh dear, we're too heavy for the lift. Oh, I know. Everyone, raise your right leg. Uh -huh. Oh, no, we're still too heavy. Everyone, very, very slowly raise the other leg. Uh -huh. No, I'm only joking. Brian, release the ballast basket. Nine for level 54. Oh. This is brilliant. Yes, it's a remarkably efficient system. Efficient? Haven't you heard of electricity, old man? I'm sorry, Mike, I didn't catch that. It's a bit slow, did you say? Pop another pair of umpers in the basket, Brian. Hello, how long can I do? So, um, 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 well, they look like they're not afraid of a bit of elbow grease. And, well, half size does mean half rates. <laughs> Where do you get them from? Well, I can get them from anywhere, Mr. Salter. The Oompa Loompas are an ancient and long lost tribe. Where do they come from? Well, they come from Loompaland, of course. Loompaland? There's no such place. Well, I can assure you, dear lady, that there is. Mr. Wanga, I teach geography. Oh, well, you'll know all about it then, unless you don't. In which case, you do now. You'd be amazed at the amount of stuff a person can know without actually knowing that they know it. I know I am. Oh, oh good, we're here. Right, ready? No dirt under the fingernails. Nothing between the ears. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the inventing room. Morning, Oompas. Morning. They're mixing. That was 54. Give me a 45 and a 278. They pick ingredients from the ingredients wheel, then mix them all together for your delight and delectation. 633 and a 12. Get up. <laughs> the inventing room, I say the inventing room is where all my greatest creations are born. And as everyone knows, nothing good can be born unless you have a little bit of fun. <laughs> Six and two degrees. Look out! <laughs> Dangerous business. This is not good for my nerves. <gasps> oh. Morning, Beryl. How are you today? <laughs> oh. Have you lost your pizzazz? <laughs> yeah. And um, Mervyn, um, give me all two ounces of treacle and uh, oh, a pinch of gravel, please. Thank you, Mervyn. There you go. This should get you going again. <gasps> oh, there you go. That's just what the doctor ordered. Brace yourself. Thank you, Beryl. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present... Thank you, Beryl. May I present the everlasting gobstopper. <laughs> Looks like an ordinary gobstopper, but pop one in your mouth. And you can suck for as long as you like. Yeah, it will never lose its flavour. Never. Take care of it well enough, you can pass it on to your grandchildren. That is a wonder of the world. But, but how can you make a profit on those Wonka? I mean, <laughs> you can only sell them once. Well, I, I, I don't plan to sell them at all. 
Mr. Salt. No, the everlasting Godstopper is a special edition. Look, I've made one for each child on the tour. Wow! Thank you, Mr. Wonka. Make sure you don't lose it. You? Something wrong? Something sucks, Wonka. I'm going to chew a... Chew? Well, that is very interesting, Violet. Perhaps you'd be interested in one of my other new inventions. Oh, Bertha. <laughs> Activate your gun drum, would you? Yeah. Give me a 12 and a 6 and a dash of 3.14159 recurring. There you go. There you go. Brace yourselves! <laughs> Thank you, Bertha. Ladies and gentlemen, I call it gastromolecular unicellulose mouth mulch. But you might know it as gum. Quite. Inside this tiny strip of gum is all the flavor and sensation of an entire three-course Sunday dinner from a single afternoon in 1979. <laughs> now look here, Wonka. <laughs> now, well, this, this could... This could revolutionize the retail sector entirely. Yes, it could, Mr. Salt, but it won't. Why ever more? There's a problem with pudding. Tomato soup! That's the start. It's quite traditional. Frost chicken! Sunday afternoon, all the family in the parlor. Give the parts on the radio. Potatoes and gravy. Granny and Jimmy dripping in the corner. Violet, whatever you do, don't hit pudding. Ignore him, Violet, you shoe girl, do it. Violet, no. She's a cracker. Violet, don't get to pudding. Oh, my. What is it, honey? Pie. Pudding. What kind of pie, Doc? Blueberry pie, Daddy. Blueberry pie. Pudding. My God, Walker, what is happening to her? She's getting bigger than ever.
Beauregard. She exploded! <laughs> well, she didn't explode, Mr. Beauregard. Her bubble burst, that's all. It could act to the best of us. Now, quick as you can, pop down to the juicing room and scoop her out of the fruit bong. If you're quick, you catch her before she starts to ferment. She exploded! <laughs> what? Oh, she'll be fine. The Oompa Loompas will make sure she gets back to normal. Well, maybe not normal, but, you know, near enough. Onwards! Chins up! Near the top! Jack! Grandpa Joe, do you think Violet will be all right? I don't know, Charlie. I'm not sure she was all right in the first place. Give up, buckets! Anyone stay close to me at all times? I got lost in here once, but I still haven't found my way out. Ten!
Sewage ponds. Poor Veruca. Well, it's the sewage I feel sorry for. <laughs> Wait a minute, what day is it today? Tuesday. Ah, really like The shoot's diverted on a Tuesday. Where to? The incinerator. We <laughs> shall be burned alive. Oh, yes, that is a worry. Still no time to mourn. It's not what Veruca would have wanted. And Veruca always got what she wanted, didn't she? We was one with a smile in us and a spring in our hearts. Advance! Grandpa John, you don't really think Veruca's being incinerated, do you? Right now, Charlie, I think anything's possible. Mr. Walker wouldn't do that. She was quite annoying. <laughs> but even so... Buckets don't dawdle. <laughs> It's real! 
real. Taste it. It's really real. Oh, that is truly remarkable. Hey, Wonka, if you can take chocolate by TV, then you should have pushed me to. Well, I suppose I could, but there might be some technical difficulties. I'm doing it. Hey, Mikey, what are you doing? Uh, Now that 
I'm small, my mommy can look after me all day. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mike? <laughs> yes. Just like when you were a tiny baby. <laughs> Mommy's got a new little helper now. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Wonka. <laughs> Say thank you, Mr. Wonka. Well, well, well. Only one child left. The rate you're losing children, Mr. Wonka. I'm beginning to think Charlie should be worried. What? Oh, yes, I see what you mean. I'm happy to be careless with safety, haven't I? Do you want to go on, Charlie? Yes, Mr. Wonka, of course I do. Excellent. I'm glad you said that. I really am, because I have one last room I want to show you. It's right at the top of my factory, and I think you'll find it's full of the most delightful surprises. Come on. Up, up, up we go. The time to lose. Charlie, did you hear that? Delightful surprises. You know what that means, don't you? No, Grandma, what? It means a lifetime supply of sweets. Do you really think so? Of course. There's no other children left. What else could he mean? Don't think again, but it's no time to dally when wonders are in. Wonders, see? We're coming, Mr. Walker. Up the stairs, please. No time to dally when wonders are waiting. No oxygen up here. Hardly breathe. Are you nearly up there yet? If you were any further up, Charlie, you'd be down. Which, if I'm not mistaken, you are. Hang on a minute. These stairs were going up just now. Where are we now, Mr. Wonka? This, Charlie, is my favourite room of all. The imagining room. It's completely empty. Exactly. It's as empty as a blank sheet of paper. This is where I have all my new ideas. I come up here to think, and when a thought arrives, I open my notebook and draw. You have a notebook? Of course. I keep it right here, look. All the ideas I've ever had are inside here, and most of the ones I haven't had as well. The ideas you haven't had? Those are the ones I keep in the blank pages at the back. May I see? No! You can't. I'm sorry, but we've run out of time. Goodness me, six o'clock already. Doesn't time fly? Well, you best be off. Off? Yes, off. I've shown you my factory, haven't I? What more do you want? It really has been the most fascinating trip. <laughs> we've been on a journey, haven't we? We've lost a few children on the way, but we've all learned something, and that's the main thing. It's been so lovely to meet you, Mr. Bucket. Charlie, but I do have the accounts to be heading on with, so... If you don't mind, the umpers will see you out. Excuse me. <coughs> Mr. Wonka, wait! What? What about Charlie's lifetime supply of sweets? Who oh, that? Well, he got his gobstopper, didn't he? <laughs> gobstopper? The everlasting gobstopper. I told you, take care of it well enough and you could pass it on to your grandchildren. You really must listen more carefully to what I said. Mr. Wonka! You've shown us wonders we can hardly believe. You can't just trick us at the last minute. Charlie's a good boy. He deserves what you said. A lifetime supply of Wonka sweets. Not one measly gobstopper. Measly! Measly! How dare you! How dare you insult my work! Oh, on you, Wonka. I'm a fighting man. Grandpa Joe, Mr. Uh, Wonka, stop! Grandpa Joe. An everlasting gobstopper is an amazing present. It's the best present I've ever had. I don't want anything else. Really. Really? I promise. Well, if you say so, Charlie. Good. Now, Mr. Bucket, if you care to step into my office, there are one or two matters left for us to finalise. Confidentiality agreements, health waivers and so forth. And then you can both be on your way. Um, Charlie, this is a grown-up's business. It's probably best if you stay here. You don't mind, do you? No, sir. Uh, I don't mind. Good. You wait here, then. But whatever you do, don't touch anything. 
seen what happens to children who break the rules in my factory, haven't you? Yes, Mr. Wonka. Good. Sit quietly, then. Mm -hmm. Won't be long. <laughs>
what you are, it's what you do, not whom that sets you free. Is the present still unlearned? Is the corners not yet turned? The main you, you, and the little me. Cheese. 